what we're recognizing at the Bartonsville Bridge today is the simple fact that there has not been, in my judgment, a recovery from a natural disaster where people have pulled together, communities taking care of neighbors and friends and strangers, never given up, reaching out to each other to get this state rebuilt better than the way Irene found us. And there's no better example than this community of that success. So we have a lot more work to do, but the work that you have done is extraordinary, and I'm here to commend you for that great work. And I'll never forget uh, the first words of the storm. And we know in getting the south first, I happened to get Montpelier. I wasn't uh, back home. And I got a, uh, a call from my brother Jeff, who drives up Hickory Ridge Road, where I was born, Westminster West, where we were raised in Putney, in that area. He told me he was driving his uh, three-quarter ton Ford four-wheel drive truck up this past this farm they described to me right up the road where we, we grew up. He said he barely got through there. The water was so hot. I said, Jeff, there's no stream there. He said, yeah, you know that little teeny stream? It turned into a river. And I was up in Montpelier. National forecasters had all been saying, you know, we're in for the worst, we're in for the worst. High winds, we're all told to take our furniture in and all the rest. There was no wind, it was raining a little bit, and I was just starting to sit down thinking, wow, they were wrong again, we escaped the bullet. Until that call came from Jeff. Then about an hour later, I started getting text but photographs sent to me of Sam's Army and Navy and Flat Street, Brattleboro, all the way back up. And uh, it wasn't long after that that we were doing our disaster recovery work. And I got a call about Wilmington. It was the middle of the night. It actually wasn't that late at night. It was about uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. And Wilmington was totally underwater. And you were totally isolated. There was no way to get emergency crews in. And my emergency management folks were asking about routes up over the mountains in from western Massachusetts. There's no doubt in my mind that only in Vermont would we have made the progress that we had in the last 12 months. And it's because of you. It's because Vermonters, like no other people in this nation, reach out to friends, reach out to neighbors, and reach out to total strangers and say, hey, we're here to help because you are human and you live in Vermont, you're part of our family, we care about you, and we're not gonna rest until we help you get back. So I came to say thank you. Why is it so important that we use this opportunity to look forward a little bit as we also look back? Listen, you don't celebrate something like Irene. You commemorate something like Irene because there's so much more work left to do. And I keep saying, you know, this is a tale of two states. It really is. It's a tale of two states. It's those who didn't get affected that have been moved, moved on with their lives. And then it's just as good as these people who have to be next to the wrong river, next to the wrong brook, living in a tough place, literally half a mile from someone who didn't get hit, who right now still doesn't have their life back. They don't have a place they can really call home. They lost their belongings. They lost the photos of the kids. They lost so much. And those are the folks that need us the most right now. Why do I say the most right now? Because a lot of folks think that everything's okay. And it's not. A lot of folks think that we've recovered and we haven't. So I hope that we'll all, as Vermonters, use this anniversary of Irene to keep a couple of things close to our hearts and close to our minds. The first is we've got a lot more work to do. We celebrate today the extraordinary generosity of Vermonters, the folks in Hancock who have lifted up, lifted out, given everything they had, added energy, and ask this simple request, eat, sleep, and dig back in because there's more work to do. We're going to put back the houses in most cases and we'll get people back in good house. We'll get them the resources they need to have something in that house that they can call home over time. 
What we will not get back is the six Vermonters who lost their lives in Iowa. And I just ask you to use the spirit of those extraordinary Vermonters on this anniversary of a devastating storm to reinvigorate and recharge so that we can indeed ensure that those who are still suffering get their pride back. 1620, they started this tradition of the New England town meeting. And you folks responded the same way as we pulled together. Our neighbors to the east say, live free or die. Good sentiment, I approve of it, I agree. But freedom and unity is a better one. <laughs> we are free and we work together and I'm so proud of you, thank you. So to all of you, keep it up, we're proud of you. We've come a long way. We've got so much to celebrate in terms of what has happened in the last 12 months. and so much left to do. And I and my team will partner with you until we get it done. We get everyone back, everyone in better shape.